ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Indeed, all praise and thanks for Allah. We praise and thank Him. We seek His help and we ask His forgiveness. We take refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from our sinful deeds. Whoever Allah guides, no one can mislead. And whoever He leads to stray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. He is one having no partners. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon his family and his companions. I'm about to proceed. Uh, now, those of you who saw the uh, notification for today, you'll see that the title of the bayan is uh, Just One Word of Advice. And I actually mean that, really. Just, there's one bit of nasiha today, just one word. But I'm not going to tell you what that word is, because uh, we'll be finished then, and people coming late won't hear it. So... Uh, it, it follows on, actually, from last, last month, in fact. Uh, so just a quick recap uh, for those of you who weren't here or didn't get to see it. Uh, we were looking at success last month. Um, success, the sort of success that uh, really we could call dunya success that we, many of us, many of us seem to be engrossed in. Uh, and, but we were looking uh, at, at true success as described in the Qur'an, yes, and in, in, in our deen. Um, now, uh, I, I'll very briefly mention uh, a couple of, uh, some of the things that I mentioned last time. That we, even in the Adhan, there is mention of success, isn't there? Hayal al-Salah, Hayal al-Falah. You see, Falah meaning success or prosperity. Yes? Uh, so, come to prayer, come to success, come to prosperity. So. We looked at that. We looked at uh, the first five verses of Surah Al-Baqarah as well. Uh, now, we're going to look at a bit more depth into that, inshallah, today. Uh, but it, there, the fifth verse, it mentions, Sa'adu bin Ibn Shaitan Rajim, that Ulaika ala hudam min rabbihim wa ulaika humul muflihun. Those are the ones, yes, those are the ones who are on a guidance from their Lord and the one, they are the uh, successful. Those are the ones who are successful, you see, or prosperous. So we looked at that, and again, as I said, we'll look, in, look at those verses in a bit more depth, inshallah, today. We looked at Surah Al-A'la, some verses from there as well. قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ تَزَكَّ وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى You see that uh, successful is the one who purifies himself and remembers the name of his Lord and prays. You see, but, the, but then, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ dunya. Nay, but you prefer the life of this world. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَعَبْقَى Whereas the akhirah, the hereafter, the afterlife is better and more enduring. Eternal, you see. So we, we had a look at that. And, and we also looked at Surah Al-Asr, you see, where we have... Um, Again, you've, you've heard this so many times before, but just, just mention it uh, uh, concisely, inshallah. So, Bismillah rahman rahim wal asr. Yes, by time, inna al insana la fi khusr. Indeed, man is in loss. Hum the humanity is, is in a state of loss, that default state. And then, illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sab. So, if we look at it, the default state is a, uh, is a state of loss, and we might say, that's a sort of failure, yes? But there are these exceptions, which we may see as exceptions to being in loss, so profit, or, or, or even success again. So, except those who have faith and, and do good deeds and enjoin one another, urge one another to the truth and urge one another to, to sabr, to patient perseverance, hanging on in there, yes? Having, having patience. So we looked at all that, okay? That's a quick summary. Now, today, really, I want to ask a, a, a question in some ways, not literally, but just a rhetorical question, that, that 
you know, and, and one of the uh, surahs, actually, we looked at, we looked at it uh, last time as well, a couple of verses. We looked at the verses from uh, Surah at the Kathur, you see, because there, there's a description of the sort of uh, absorption we have in dunya, dunya achievements or dunya acquisition. Because we're told, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, al-hakumu takathur hatta zurtum al-maqabir. That uh, uh, rivalry or competition for worldly increase distracts you. Yes, or you are obsessed by greed for more and more. It's this idea of more and more. And not just more, acquiring more and more, but having rivalry, competition. You know, it's very interesting that some people, there are situations where uh, they, they may be quite happy about some, say, uh, something that they don't possess. They're, they're, they're fine with it, but then when their neighbor gets that, or their brother gets that, or whoever, their colleague, then they want it. You see, so it's rivalry as well. It's not just acquisition. Yeah? Rivalry for more and more. This is, uh, uh, this is something which drives us, you see. Until, hatta zultumul maqabir, until you visit your graves. It's a lifelong thing. People don't give this up. Now, as I said, I want to ask a question, or a couple of questions. You see, all of us in this room, if asked, if, if we were asked, we, uh, the, do you believe in Allah? Do you believe in God? All of us would say yes. Yes? Okay. If we were asked, do you believe in Akhirah? Do you believe in the afterlife? Do you believe in uh, Jannah, in paradise, or Nar, hellfire? <coughs> Again, all of us would say yes. Yes? So why is it then, this is the question, why is it, or one of the questions, that we spend so much of our time Yes, in worldly pursuits, dunya pursuits, dunya success, and even dunya entertainment. Think how much time we are spending, some of us, watching the World Cup. Now, we're not saying this is, this is haram or whatever, or it's, but just think how much time we can find. We can find 90 minutes, those of us who watch just one. But there are people who watch, I don't know, three or, is it three or four a day? This, I think... Yes, there are people watching, managing to watch all the matches a day. How is it we find time for things like that, but yet we don't find time for the things which are going to matter eternally? Strange, isn't it? And yet we all say we believe in the Akhirah. If we believe, why do we give so much importance to dunya? Now, there are many answers to this question. And really, we could, I mean, all sorts of things. And we haven't got time to look into all the, all the different reasons. I mean, but one reason, a very obvious reason, and you may, shaitan, he's playing his part. Yes. You know this verse you've heard so many times now. He promises them. He's, humanity, shaitan promises humanity. He promises them. And he creates in them desires, vain desires for... Yes, but whatever shaitan promises is nothing but deception. False promises. But we fall for it. You know, we give priority to, as I say, temporary enjoyment, temporary success, temporary gratification. But what are we sacrificing? You see. So that, that's one reason. There are many other reasons. But today... Just look at, I want to look at one reason, actually. Um, and this is to do with how seriously we take reality. You know, it's, it's about connection to reality. Now, and we'll go to those verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, inshallah. You see, it starts, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Thalik al-Kitabu la raiba fihi huda lil-Muttaqeen. So, Alif Lam Mim, we say Allah knows best the meaning of these letters. And then, this book, no doubt in it, is a guidance for the Muttaqeen. The, those with Taqwa. Yes, Taqwa, which is difficult to translate into English, but things like God consciousness or fear of God. God-fearing. Some, the Muttaqeen, they're God-fearing, you see. 
And this used to be a, a, a positive word in this country many years ago. Now people don't use it very much. You know, it's a, it was a good quality to be God-fearing. But as I say, people don't really use it. Alhamdulillah, we do in terms of taqwa. But, uh, or mindful, being mindful, being aware, yes, being on, on our guard. These sorts of things. So, description of uh, the Quran, or the book, be, uh, the Quran being it's divine revelation and it's a guidance for those who have taqwa. And then, but then we looked at, you see, the, the qualities. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَا هُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ We looked at this last time. That those, who have, those who believe in the unseen, the ghaib, but not just unseen, that which is beyond human perception. And you'll see this is, this is really important to the point I want to make today, inshallah. You see, the ghaib, there's a realm. We believe that there is a realm or there are things in our existence which we cannot perceive through our senses. We can't see, yes, or hear, or taste, or smell, or feel. But we don't deny that they exist, you see. It's a bit of an arrogant position to think that the only things that exist are the things that we can perceive through our senses. Yes. So alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaibi wa yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun. And so those who believe in, in the unseen, they establish the prayer. Again, prayer is mentioned. Yes. And from what we have provided them, they spend. Okay, and then it goes, wa alladhina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablika wa bil akhiratihum yuqin. And those who believe in what was revealed to you, to the Prophet Sallallahu and what was revealed from before you. Yes. And now this is Bil akhiratihum. This is a point I want to emphasize. And in the akhirah, yuqinun. They have what? Yaqeen. Not just iman, not just faith, but yaqeen. Certainty or firm faith. Conviction. Now, and then it goes, ulayka ala hudam mir rabbihim wa ulayka humul musuhun. They are the ones who uh, are on guidance from their Lord and they are the successful. Now, you see, here's, the, here's another question, and it's worth thinking about this, I think, inshallah, that how are we to believe in things which we, can't, which we cannot perceive through our senses, you see? You might ask this question, how? Why should we believe in things that we can't perceive? You know, and in English, there's this, there's this saying in English, you probably know, Seeing is believing. And we're talking about unseen now. So how are we supposed to believe in it? And how are we supposed to have firm conviction? Yes. Have certainty in the akhira. When we can't use any of our senses, you see, to, to experience this. You know, to take, to take an example. It's a, if there was a fire, say, in, next, in the library or whatever, or somewhere in this area, what would happen, God forbid, but what would happen would be that we would see it, or we would hear it, or feel it, smell it, maybe even taste it in terms of the ash or whatever, yeah? There, there may be, we would experience it through our senses, and we would take action, would we not? You wouldn't be sitting there, I wouldn't be standing here, we'd be out of here. We'd take action. Now, the hellfire, for instance, is just as real, in fact, more real, it's not temporary, yes? It's, uh, and, and Jannah is more real than any, uh, the hellfire is more real than any uh, fire on this earth, or, yes? And, and Jannah is, is eternal, you see? More real than any pleasure or any uh, uh, enjoyment or uh, uh, entertainment that we could have in this world, you see. But, here's the point. We can't experience it through our senses. So, it's not as real to us in some ways. True? Things which we actually experience... I mean, for some of us, so things which we, can, we actually experience, they, they, they take on a reality which things that we can't experience don't. Yeah. But we need to make these realities, you see. 
We need to have, as, as the Quran says, those who, who believe in the unseen. And, and وَبِلْ آخِرَتِهُمْ يُقِنُونَ Then those who have yaqeen, certainty or conviction in the akhirah. How do we do it? How do we do this? Because we can't do it through experience. I mean, not through our senses, rather. We can do it through experience. Now, this is the answer. Or oh, one answer. One answer. And this is the word. That, you know, I said, as I said, it was, today is just one bit of advice. Just one word. And most of you are here now, so I'll say it. The word is Iqra. Iqra. The first word revealed to the Prophet. Read. That's the bit of advice today. Read. And why am I saying this, you see? And I'm referring principally to the Quran, but of course the Ahadith as well and so on. And then we can read more generally. But read in terms of Quran, you see. One of the things we do as a community, we, alhamdulillah, people do recite Quran, people memorize Quran. Yes, we use Quran in, we listen to Quran in, uh, in Ramadan, yes, in Taraweeh. Many people recite, listen to, or maybe even recite the entire Quran. But you see, we're forgetting this function of the Quran, which is it gives us a description of reality. You know, it's not just rulings or how to do things. There are verses, there are verses, and the scholars have derived all sorts of rulings. But you know, the verses of Ahkam to do with the ruling, they're, they're quite a small proportion of the Quran. What are the other verses for? Well, there are reminders, there are things which impact our hearts, inshallah. And by the way, don't forget, it's, it's in the heart where faith, iman, and yaqeen reside. It's not through our minds, it's through our hearts, you see. We have to emphasize this, the importance of the heart. Now, how are we going to get a picture of reality, the reality that we can't experience through our senses? You know, and, and, and in fact, the Prophet ﷺ said, in the Hadith Qudsi, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have prepared for my righteous slave that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no heart of man has ever conceived. We can't even imagine Jannah. So how are we going to get some sort of idea? How, are we going to, how is Akhirah going to become more of a reality to us? How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become more of a reality to us? So as I said, there are many ways in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one of the ways is as he, we can connect to that which he has described in the Quran. He describes himself. You know, and, and just to end on this, taking, the, I mean, yeah, people are aware that the World Cup is going on, but you know, there are people, that people immerse themselves at different levels, and there are some people for whom it may not mean very much, they may just catch the news, or they may know the score of this game, or that game, or whatever, and there are people who are watching a bit, but there are people who are watching uh, all of it, and there are people who know the names of all the players of their favorite team, they know not just names of biographies, what skills they possess, there are people who really immerse themselves into it, and for those people, that, it means an awful lot, you see, because when you start to know about things, when you research things, when these people come alive in our minds, in our imaginations, it means a lot more. Now, why can't we do that with the Quran? You see? What about all the characters in the Quran, all the prophets and messengers and other characters? What about those stories? Why, why don't we want to form relationships with them? You see? And one way of doing it is to read and principally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are we going to base it on? Just what things we've been taught or things we, that it, you know, that maybe ideas that we have or, but what about the way he describes himself? You see, we can relate to that, but we need to read it first. Yes. Okay, we will stop there. So just a very, very simple bit of advice. Iqra. You see, we need to. This is something that 
you know, in some ways we, we neglect because, as I say, we use the Quran for all sorts of reasons. But this, this reason is to get a, get a picture of reality. You know, and we've got to read it with meaning, you see. And if we don't know Arabic, well, we can read the trans or not the translated the renditions into English or whatever language. Yeah, that we can read, we can get some. We may not get 100% from that. We get something, inshallah. <laughs>